Right, good morning. There's always a lag when I hit start streaming, so I've hit start streaming now, uh, and hopefully when it tells me we're live. Right, it tells me we are live. Good morning, I'm Matt, and welcome to this morning's RC Coffee Chat. So those of you which are on the live version, if you can let me know if the audio quality is good, uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. Now, quickly moving on, what have we got on the topics for you uh, here this morning. Uh, topic number one is going to be an update on the Crossfire. Many of you know that I had the Crossfire uh, 2 Watt module uh, across. Uh, I don't have audio, so I've just noticed the comment. You can see the live chat, which is going down the left hand side. Uh, audio should be working. Uh, I do. Brilliant. Thank you, Lauren. Right. <laughs> he was muted. There you go. Uh, right. We'll be having an update on the TBS Crossfire. Uh, we will. Uh, We'll also be having an angle, and we'll go for the positives and some of the negatives so far, but just be aware that module is still very new to me, and also those of you who have watched the uh, the chit-chat on uh, what, UHF and those kind of modules for, for RC, uh, I am very, very aware of the iPhone effect. So, uh, yeah, we'll have be having a chit-chat about the TBS Crossfire. We will also be having a quick look at the more affordable version of the TBS, uh, sorry, of the uh, Horizon Hobby uh, uh, Fairy Type W. Uh, or Blade Fairy, uh, and we'll be having a chat about that one. I've already got mine ordered. Uh, we'll find out about that in a moment as well. Uh, we've got some new FPV goggles for the girls on the way. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing that one. I haven't actually received them yet, but I kind of know what I'm getting, and I'm really looking forward to them. Uh, and then we need to chat about the backlog, which I have here. There is... Uh, a collection of videos which we have in the backlog, and we'll be taking a look at those. And we'll also be taking a look at a new model which is out due out literally in about 10 15 days' time as well. Right, it is some quick look at your chat. By the way, you can see that this, by the way, this is being recorded live. Uh, you'll be able to see the chat going on right above my head, uh, or uh, normally it's on the right hand side of the screen, which is over that side. Uh, and it looks like it's good. Happy days. Good morning, everybody. Right, uh, quick one completely off topic. Uh, when you make a purchase on Banggood, scroll down the page. So on the order summary page, scroll down the bottom of the page, uh, and then you get this lucky draw thing. Now, it's always... Oh, damn it. Um, sorry, I... <sighs> I ordered a model just literally just a few moments ago, uh, and I've run out of my chance because I was trying to hold off to show you. Uh, do scroll down your screen and then click on Lucky Draw, and then you get worst case you get ten percent off, which is normally what you get off uh, if you. <laughs> that's what it normally goes to, uh, but you can get credits and things like that. I've never had a thanks for your participation just yet, uh, but you can get some bits and bobs off as well. So I just want to add that add that one in as a quickie. Right, let me get back to topic number one this morning, which is the TBS Crossfire. Uh, so, so far, I am genuinely impressed. Now, if you've not seen the video on this, I'll quickly get this up uh, on the dashboard, and I'll put a link afterwards uh, in the video description for you. Uh, I did a chit-chat a couple of days ago on the uh, options which we have uh, available to us oh my uh, for... Let me put that up on the screen. So there's a link to that video in, the, I'll put it in afterwards. Uh, and this is where we had a chit chat about the different options which are available to us uh, as RC pilots. We had obviously the TBS Crossfire, we had the Orange LRS kit, we had uh, Easy UHF, we had Dragon Link, uh, and there was another couple as well which I think we discussed as well. And what I did, I slowly like ruled them out as I went through and I kind of ended up uh, at the TVS kit. And again, the bit which really got me for the TVS kit is that, oh, yes, I know it's been out for like two years now, uh, but on a, on a serious point, it's the it's the only kit which is like being actively developed. And I, I know uh, the Dragon Link is obviously being actively developed. There's the new V2 receivers out. But on a serious point, it, it, it did look like, from an outsider's point of view, that the, the TVS stuff was the stuff which was actually progressing forwards compared to everything else. So that's where I ended up making my decision. Uh, and I'm so far, I'm, I'm really happy. I, I did have an issue with a delay on the, the transmitter module, 
Uh, the receivers, which are not next to me, are absolutely tiny. The little micro ones, uh, they're absolutely tiny. Uh, and even the diversity receiver is really no bigger than the Orange 433 modules, which I was using before. Uh, the setup user, again, I, there's no point me doing a video on these things because they're just so what the, the number one some so many other people have done uh, well i might do one put it that way um but just give you a heads up binding receivers updating the tx module updating your receivers everything is so easy and i'm so glad that i went the, went with that module with the if i put that up on the screen went with that module which is the one with the uh little push button on the back it makes things so so much easy uh easier and yeah, I'm so glad I went that route rather than trying to use a stupid Lula script uh, through the Tranus, which would I've never got on with them. I've always found them really laggy and just not very well polished to say the least. I, again, I've never tried the TBS uh, Lula scripts, but my experience with the other Lula scripts which I've used is never really been good at all. So uh, I'm glad that I've gone that route. Uh, and I definitely didn't test it in anger, and I definitely was not flying three fil sorry five fields away at five meters off the ground uh, with a hundred percent link quality. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm obviously impressed if that was the kit and the model uh, performing uh, like that. I was genuinely impressed. Where I'd had blackouts before, uh, the Crossfire unit really did excel, uh, and uh, I d there was no long walks required. Obviously, hypothetically speaking. Uh, so yeah, the crossfire so far, just be aware, I'm only like a week in, it's only been two flying sessions, of course as the transfer to a new receiver, as much as you'd like it to be a straightforward case that uh, the model will remember all its trim and stuff like that if you've got the Eagle Tree Vector in there, uh, it's the reality is that the models have needed a little bit of trim since then uh, and uh, the, 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 the process is just ongoing uh, in short, so uh, look out for a uh, longer type review of that i'll probably do a little when i get another receiver and stuff like that i'll go through the basics of that uh, but it is really straightforward really really straightforward the, the the one thing which i can say that i don't like about the crossfire is that with the to, with the receivers is that you need to use their bst connector so normally you've got like a connector on the top uh, which is that you've got ground five volts and then channels uh, so that could be channels one to four, which you can, uh, oh, that's on the micro receiver, which of course you can very easily map using the transmitter to be output an S bus or PPM or the RSSI or the link quality or channel 12, if you want it to be channel 12. Really straightforward to set up. But on the bottom, you have the uh, black sheep telemetry uh, thing. And the thing is, is that it's a complete ball bag to, to get uh the the feedback to work back with the eagle tree vector you then have to solder up three of them you have to make your own extra three wires uh so ground and then two of their little connector wires and you have to take that from the uh receiver so if you think about the mini tunnel it's like the receivers are actually out in the wing uh, and that comes all the way down the wing and then it go then you have to take it it has to be the last node in the chain of their bus so uh with an eagle tree vector you've got the vector you might have an airspeed sensor you may then have a, a GPS unit, which you normally would have, and then in this case, you need the BST connect to the receiver on the end of it, so that then I've got a wire coming all the way, well, three wires, ground, and these two other signal wires coming all the way down the wing, and then they go down through the fuse, and then up, and they go into the back of the GPS unit. Uh, that has been a royal pain in the ass, because, come on, they, they, they only connect one, they only give you like one connector uh, in each connect, in each set, which is, Fair dues to them, but I'm, I'm going to have to go and get some more connectors because obviously I've got more than like one model which I might be using. So that that is the the fiddly aspect which I really don't like about it, and that's that's vector orientated that you have to run these extra free cables down the wing. Uh, so those of you which are in the Facebook group uh, is that you would have seen me like with the uh, wing off the mini talon for example, and you may see the wing later today off the XUAV clouds. Uh, is that I'm having to put three extra wires in each and wing uh, to run them down. Oh, one other minor little point as well, absolute completely surprised me. Uh, with the micro t uh, receivers, you can have S bus on every channel if you wanted it to be. So you've got four outputs. Uh, you can have S, S bus on every single one of them if you wanted, by the looks of it. Uh, whereas the diversity receiver, you can have PPM on channels one and two, but you can only have S bus once out of channel eight. 
And I find, I, I find that very, very peculiar. Uh, and the reason why that would be an issue uh, is that no, normally SBUS is faster. Uh, and normally SBUS is always my first choice wherever possible. Uh, and normally what I would be trying to do is that if you think about it, I, I need to get wires, I need to get SBUS down to a vector inside the middle of the model. But then I also want SBUS on a separate wire to go to an SBUS to PWM converter. So then I can do pan, tilt, visor uh, and uh, FPV switcher on a separate set of channels. I can't do that with the diversity receiver. Uh, well, I can't, technically I can, I can use the PPM. It was just a shock you could only get SBUS out of one port. Uh, you, and by the way, you wouldn't set it up so that you have SBUS coming from the receiver down the wing then going into a converter and then going on to your vector and then going on to your, uh, to your uh, servos uh, because you've just stuck a failure point r right in the middle of the line. It's safer to have the two separate two little systems separate. Uh, and I know it's a minor little detail and I know I've probably lost some of you in that conversation. Uh, if you've got any of that or what I was trying to make sense of there, uh, it's just a minor gripe with Crossfire module that you were only able to get SBUS out of one port on their diversity receivers, which are the expensive ones, uh, which are like a hundred quid compared to the little micro, the little micro ones, which are like 40 quid, and you can do whatever you like with those. So yeah, there, there's the crossfire. I, I am impressed, genuinely impressed so far, uh, but remember I am going very, very careful of that iPhone effect, something which we discuss uh, in the episode about uh, RC UHF devices. Yeah, what do we do? We spoke about crossfire, Dragonlink, Open LRS, Easy UHF, FR Sky R9 and uh, the Orange Kit as well. So, yeah, happy day. So, let's have a quick look. Uh, Ruddy says, anybody going to the LMA CrossFit weekend? Not myself. I've got a rammed weekend of things to do. Uh, MFD, and I'm just keeping on half an eye on your chat, which you can see just above my head. Right, let's move on to topic number two. Now, you may have noticed just a few moments ago, I, I was trying to show you that shopping cart at the bottom of Banggood. The reason why I was trying to, sh I was able to show you that uh, is because I just kind of made a pre-order. Now, let me just put this into context. Many of you may have heard of the Blade Theory wing, uh, and it's a model which has been out for a long period of time. And I've always kind of fancied one, but to be brutally honest, like there's no way in a Blue Monkeys that I was ever gonna pay uh, you can't see it on, well, you can just about see it on the, above my head. At $249, $250, stupid money. Absolutely stupid money uh, for the model, which is a lot of money for uh, an EPO phone model. I, I just don't know how they can do it. Uh, anyway, uh, Take a close look at the model. Look where the servos are being placed. Look at the wingspan. Uh, look at the nose, specifically that little capture point just there and where the FPV module is. Maybe if I change the images, we might be able to see something a little bit different. If their images work. There we go. Oh, we'll have a look, quick look at the construction on there. Uh, there are bays or modules which they've got underneath the wing. Uh, keep that in the back of your mind. If we look at the top of the wing as well, servos are mounted at the back. There's a plastic cover on the top. Uh, so, yeah, I've always had an eye on the uh, Blade Theory or the Theory Type W. Now, the good news is, is that it has been and turned up uh, on Banggood, which is happy days. Now, just for those of you which are ill-informed, is that it's not Banggood which has created this model. It's Banggood which is selling this model uh, and they've bought from a third-party supplier. So with that in mind, someone has been and got hold of King Kong, by the way, which I know the name King Kong by uh, Motors, which I bought for my very first quadcopter uh, or multi-rotor. Uh, and it uh, looks like someone's got hold of the mold. Because if we take a close look, look where the servos are mounted in the back, although they've tweaked those pieces in there. And then look at the nose thing on the, on the top. It is very, very similar uh, and I would like to say it's, I'm not going to say the poor man's Blade Fury. I'm going to say uh, a Blade Fury or Type W at the price it perhaps should have been. Open that one up. Um, so they've literally just turned into pre-order today. Uh, that's why I had my car open a few moments ago. Uh, it's because I've gone on and I've already pre-ordered mine as well. Uh, did get, again, expected on the 16th of July. So it's about a week away. Uh, and uh, when we get one, happy days, uh, we'll, uh, 
we'll see what it's like. But I am, I, I think it's going to be perfectly fine. I generally do. The, the only con mild consideration which I've got is that it might be a bit raspy where the motor is placed uh, at the back. That's my only concern. And we'll see what it's like when it turns up. Uh, there is a smaller version which is turned up as well. I have recognised that fuselage and I have recognised those wingtips from another model which I saw a very, very long time ago. Uh, I'm not too sure I will personally be going for that one. Uh, the, the reason being is that I've never really liked the, the, like the, the circular fuselage uh, like you get on the X series of wings. That one does remind me uh, an awful lot of that and I've never really been a fan for those. Uh, there's a, what's it, the Tomahawk from Hobby King which has got the same kind of structure. Never really liked that type of wing, although I understand that obviously you've got a huge fuse area uh, which you can fit uh, models, uh, batteries, etc., etc., inside. So, yeah, yeah, it's sixty dollars. <sighs> Happy days. Is it? Is it a copy from China, or did the Blade Fury already come from China in the first place? Is it Horizon Hobby, which have pimped out their mold to another company? And that's uh, if we think about this, we had a Sonic Model uh, come out. What was it with the Sonic Model HD wing, which was the uh, Hobby King, uh, Mako, the uh, was it the ready made uh, the ready RC uh, recruit was it the, that one which they had I forget now uh, and then of course you've had the big Sky Hunter come out from, from Sonic model and a collection of other ones and they've just been basically been renting the mold um, from the original creator uh, and then gone off and branding it as their own and added in their own components so. It's not something which is unheard of so far in this hobby of somebody borrowing someone else's mould or buying someone else's mould or renting someone else's mould uh, for a period of time. So I'm up for it. I, I totally am. I, I Like I said, I always liked the theory, Type W, uh, but there was no way in a blue monkeys that I was going to pay $250. I'm pretty sure it was the same thing for you, $250. And I know that's a plug and play or bind and fly kit compared to a, just a kit. Uh, but even still, there is a massive discrepancy here in price there. Uh, and $60, I think I ended up paying $47 after I used uh, uh, some points which I had. So, yeah, all in all, uh, it can't be that bad. And I would, <laughs> I'll be able to think in the back of my head, well, I've got uh, a really decent model for a really decent price. So that that's happy days. So I'm looking forward to that. Right, next uh, topic is, I'm afraid we are staying with Banggood for a few moments. Uh, the reason why I'm staying with Banggood for a few moments, this one is due to turn up here this week. Uh, fingers crossed, touch wood, uh, is that uh, I've seen these, that those are the Ishin EV800Ds. Uh, I've bought these for my daughter. We did have a brutal conversation uh, on the flight line. Uh, about the EV 100 she has been using these up until now uh, and uh, while she understands and knows where we are etc etc uh, in the sky is that she did borrow Andy's fat shark goggles and they were just absolutely amazing her confidence level went from okay to really okay the 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 start difference between those ones uh, and uh, the, the the fat sharks were, were, was an epic step for her. So uh, as I explained to her, I'm not buying you a pair of those fat shark goggles because they're stupid expensive. Uh, but we will get you a pair of the Ishin goggles, which Mark has got. Uh, so those ones we've got, and again, I know they're good. The nice thing about these is that they've got the, the number one, you've got the DVR recording in them, uh, but you can also take the front lens or the, take the top off, and then you've then got the screen if you want, just wanted the screen. Uh, so not probably something which I will do. Uh, and, they're, and they're also not ridiculously heavy as well. So Abby's getting a, an upgrade uh, very shortly to her goggles and uh, I think she's looking forward well uh, she doesn't know that they're on the way put it that way uh, but we'll be flying out on the weekend so fingers like literally I said fingers touch wood uh, crossed that they'll be here in time and I will do a little mini review uh, and we'll have a uh, a very honest review from <laughs> someone who's learning to fly FBV uh, and we'll, we will compare them uh, against the uh, uh, each uh, the EV100s Right, uh, yes, Joanne, $250 for a, a 780mm 
Wink. Ah, yeah, totally agreed. Uh, that reminds me, we need to, to uh, shout out Corner. Uh, I don't... Oh, hang on, it's updating. There we go. So good morning, Austin. Good morning, Sean Crest. Good morning, Henry. Good morning, Legion. Uh, good morning, Jason. Good morning, Styrola. Good morning, Joe. Uh, good morning, Julian. Good morning, Zenef. Good morning, Roddy. Good morning. If I missed him. Oh, Akoi, good morning. Uh, Zenef, I got you. Sean, good morning as well. Joe, good morning. Lauren, good morning. Killer Dave, good morning. The ki you can see this. It's been lagging behind here in the background. Uh, JK, uh, good morning as well. Roddy, good morning too. Right. <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> I've never seen you do that. So if I have missed your name, I do apologise. That did kind of just blur past the screen, didn't it? That was a bit nuts. Uh, if I did miss your name, please don't take it personally. That was moving rather fast up there. And I think I did my best <laughs> to go through them. Right. The last but one topic. I tell you what, let's do. To, let me do the last topic, which is the V nine hundred. So, uh, staying on the horizon hobby. And by the way, happy Fourth of July, those uh, of you which are based in the Americas. Uh, <laughs> need to get that note in. Uh, the V nine hundred that is due out in the middle of this month as well. I am going to go on and pre-order one of those today too. Uh, that is basically one hundred and twenty miles an hour out of the box. Uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Just be aware there are two versions. There's the more expensive version, which comes with a stabilizer, and then there's the Au Naturel version. Uh, I will be personally going for the Au Naturel version because uh, it's considerably cheaper. Uh, so that's my reason behind that one. Uh, good morning, Brad, if I just missed you as well. Right, the last topic for this morning's RC Coffee Chat uh, is the fact that as much as Matt hates video editing, and I, I really do, it's, it's a irony for you, somebody who makes YouTube videos, uh, for all intents and purposes, hates editing videos. I really don't like it. Uh, it's always, for me, it's a, it's a necessary evil uh, of, uh, of YouTube, in short. Now, I, and I go through fits and stages of liking editing and then absolutely hating it and then not editing anything. Like, for example, I've not got the Stinger uh, made and sorted. Uh, I've got an unboxing here of a pair of wings, the right wing Mini Z uh, and also the Recon wing as well. Uh, serious pieces of kit. Absolutely beautiful. I think, I think actually the, the Mini Z, I've got it completely dialed in now. We were flying it on Wednesday, no, Tuesday night absolute corking model uh, to say the least uh, anyway i've got a whole collection of videos which are sat here in backlog at the moment uh so give you a quick heads up the links to these are all in the video description underneath this video on youtube uh, if you go down there and just click show more uh, there's links to every single one of these episodes uh, so that you can see them before they've actually gone being published uh, actually on youtube so uh, the first one is the FBV Diamond. Let me see if I can get catch this at the right time. Well, I'll, go, I'll skip to there. Uh, this is me having that check. There's one thing which really, like, really bugs me uh, is that when I see that someone's like stuck a GPS unit on top of their motor uh, and then wonder why they, they've got connection issues and things like that or they've got their uh, receiver sat underneath their video transmitter and stuff like that. Something which really, really bugs me. Uh, and we talk about the FPV diamond, which is the separation uh, of all your RC components to keep the stuff away from each other. Uh, and we're talking about a mini talon there, but I also go and grab two FPV wings uh, and it's the same kind of process. It's still a diamond, uh, but sometimes they're a bit squashed because of the nature of the wing. Uh, I, I, it was one of those episodes, I saw someone's photo uh, online and uh, I, I, it just drove me nuts. I just like, why would you do that? I just didn't understand it. Uh, and the, I came to the conclusion that either the person just didn't know uh, or they just frankly could not be asked. Uh, and then there was a comment on Instagram as well. So uh, the FBV Diamond, uh, if there's one video which you do watch, I would suggest taking a look at that one. It's about the separation of components uh, on your RC models. Uh, and uh, yes, it is a 20 minute chat about it, but I cover everything uh, which you need to know about the separation. Also why you should separate things. Uh, and, the, and instead of like, I think, what was it? Uh, <clears throat> There was a guy on um, Instagram which said about extending the antennas using SMA leads, which is just like horrifying that somebody would do that. 
on a model, why would you put attenuation in the transmission part when it's much better that you get the, the receiver out in clearer space uh, and then just run the leads out? Because the things like SBUS, for example, you can run for meters and meters and meters uh, and it won't be an issue with signal, signal decoration. But if you run like your antennas, maybe your FPV transmitter and extend that out for meters and meters, that will be an issue. Uh, so it's just like a common sense approach to parts placement, uh, part placements on RC models. Uh, yes, those are antennas taken out uh, of my head. <laughs> that was me mucking around. Uh, you will find out about that very quickly and very early on in the video. Uh, we got some sunset FPV. Like I said, we were out one of the nights early this week. Absolutely beautiful evening. Uh, it was the best flying day of 2018 so far. I don't think that night is going to be um, challenged. Uh, there wasn't even a breath of wing, uh, a breath of wind. The Mini Z, I think, I had about a 15 minute flight out of one 22 mini amphere 4S, uh, 3S pack. Uh, it was just so smooth, like really confidence building, like get down and just skirt across the top of the crop. Uh, i tell you how good the weather was uh, when when you take a look at that. Uh, the weather was so good, Craig, finally, I never thought I'd see the day. There's a there's a photo of it in the Facebook, Craig, uh, Facebook group. Craig actually flew underneath me and almost hit me as well. I never thought I, well, I would see the day when Craig did that to me. Uh, it's normally me, he's going, oh, down quite low. And of course, then I fly underneath him just to take the piss. Uh, and no, Craig was trying to follow me, got too close, and then bailed out and went underneath. I genuinely never thought I would see the day when Craig had had the confidence to do that. Uh, and I did see the day, which was early this week, and that's because the weather conditions was just so good. So that's a short version of a cruise around with the XUA Mini, mini Talon. Uh, au naturel on the sticks, no stabilisation or anything like that. Uh, and just absolutely brilliant, just wa wandering in and out of the trees. Very, very enjoyable. Uh, we do have uh, another one which is called Teach Them Young. The, those of you which knew about the Dynam Rapid, uh, which turned up here, and some of you which may have seen the photograph about the Dynam Rapid. Uh, yeah, listen out for my daughter's reaction when something amusing happens. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one which I'm going to quickly cover uh, well actually I'll, tell you, I'll, co I'll cover the other ones first um, we've got the uh, Mini Z right wing build overview that's an episode which has already been edited it's up on YouTube it's just not published uh, we've got the Mini Drac getting stuffed that's also an episode we've got a tip when it comes to E6 phase and glue uh, there's a wing mod so if you've got a micro sky hunter you might want to take a look at that one uh, there's some build tips when it comes to the right wing recon 50 inch FPV wing as well. And uh, we've got this one, which is the beginnings of Model Mondays. And those of you which don't know the background to this is the... I'm pause a moment and take a quick slow. Is that there's another YouTube channel uh, which runs something called Mousetrap Mondays. Uh, and it's a, short, a chap called Sean, really like it, it's either your cup of tea, it's not. Uh, and I really like the idea of uh, having a model Monday. So I finally got around to getting episode number one recorded. Uh, and we t uh, I was thinking about which model would be worthy of being the first model to be discussed as part of model Monday. Uh, and there's no big surprise, it was the mini drac on there. because, And again, it's the mini drac and it's, it's definitely in the top five models which I have ever flown and have owned uh, in short they, they are absolute it's an absolute corking model uh, so the, the original goal was to do it for 15 uh, sorry for five minutes and uh, in the end when I by the time I'd added flight footage at the end as well it turned into a 20 minute 21 minute episode and I'm not apologizing for that because that if that's that's one model and again the, I'm sure the other models which we get in the in the starting ones will all be worthy of 20 minute discussions uh, because they are such good models uh, and there's a lot to talk about the mini track as well how it handles the you you will see me using this expression of of the model sitting down in the sky uh, and i've got some video footage of the model you just see it just come around and click in and it just sits its ass down uh, and then goes across the flight line. Uh, so very, very much worthy of being the first uh, model to go into 
uh, model Mondays. Uh, so it's not Monday today, it's Wednesday. And that's one of the things for you to be aware of is because you're here on this RC Coffee Chat. Uh, you, there's a link to this one down in the video description, you can get hold of it early. Uh, if you're in the Facebook group, shameless plug for the Facebook group, there's a link to that, the Raglan Nuts Off group below. Uh, go and take a look at that because I always publish all these videos which we're discussing here, all these episodes, have already been published in the Facebook group. Uh, and then of course now, because I'm, we're trying to ensure that I've got a backlog in place, is that it could be several days minimum before they actually go out and hit YouTube. So if you want an insider scoop, uh, the Facebooks group is the place to be. Right, uh, you're going to have to excuse me. I've not really kept an eye on the chat today uh, above my head. But it is time for me to go. But I also did notice there was a comment in there from Sean. Uh, have you got the recon sorted yet? I've just noticed back up in the chat. And uh, No, I haven't yet is the answer, Sean. Uh, I took it out and we had a CG issue. Uh, and that was the nose punt video, uh, the tippy Tommy tippy tippy stall video, which we had out a couple of days ago. Uh, that was a recon wing going straight in the ground, absolutely fine. Completely amazed because the the whole like center section of the model really isn't there because it's all been cut out. Uh, and it took a massive nose punt, and it was absolutely fine. Work that one out. Uh, so I've got the CG sorted now. Uh, and I was also tweaking something called the crossfire. It was only something really minor. Uh, and hopefully it will be out with me on this weekend it is the farm this weekend uh so it if i'm not out flying friday because i've got some other engagements which i need to be doing on friday as well uh it, i will be out on sunday uh, and we'll go and get that one trimmed in uh and uh, get it flying well so i'm looking forward to that one uh, to, to say the least the only negative i can say about the recon wing so far is just that it's so bloody big and so heavy it's a lot of model to try and launch by myself and be on the sticks at the same time. So I think it would be more of a case that I'll give the transmitter to someone else, say Andy, for example, on Sunday, uh, and I'll go and launch the model because it is, even with just one fifty two hundred four s pack in it, it's quite heavy. And again, I've got a chunk of lead and stuff in the front pockets now uh, to try and get the weight forwards. Uh, is that we'll see what happens in short. So that's my only concern about it. Uh, but it it looks the nuts. And if the Mini Z is the thing to go by, and the other hot right wing models, uh, it's going to be really, really peachy once we get it in the sky. Uh, also, I've got really big control horns on there as well now, so I've got all my resolution back. Uh, so yeah, should be fun. Should be fun. So I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, looking forward to your results. Thank you, Sean. Right. Uh, yeah, Henry, that they are strong. It took one heck of a nose punt, and absolutely fine. Uh, and I'm also thinking about the right wing spec wing, which I've got here as well. Uh, the nose is a bit flexible, but then again, I've hit an awful lot of stuff with it. Uh, so it's horses with horses. Right, anyway, it's time for me to wrap up. Uh, what did we discuss in today's RC Coffee Chat? We spoke, we had an update for the Crossfire. So far, thumbs up from Matt. Genuinely impressed. Minor niggles. But that's minor niggles to do with outputs on the receivers, on the, the expensive receiver, compared to the cheaper like one, which is less than half the price. Uh, and annoyance around the BST lead when if you're using an Eagle Tree Vector. That, that's just an oddity. Uh, and uh, besides that, it seems to be working really, really well. Genuinely impressed. Um, to fly around on 10 milliwatts, quite high and quite far, uh, is genuinely impressive. Uh, so yeah, impressed so far. But remember, I'm going very careful of that iPhone effect. I don't want. To, I'm, I'm very careful because that was 200 quid, and I don't want to be sat here going, "Well, shit, I've just spent 200 quid on something. I better tell you it's good." Uh, <laughs> I think we need to go really careful of that one. But so far, thumbs up. Just needs more time. Uh, I've only had a very small number of flights. Uh, so I can't say what it really is fantastic and I'm looking forward uh, to be saying it and be able to say that at some point in the future uh, either way we spoke about the is the blade theory at the right price you've got to agree sixty dollars or less is a complete bargain for something which is very very similar to a much more expensive model I've bought one <laughs> it'll be on the way in the, towards the end of the month We'll find out if it's any good. It looks, and that's what the fact, let me go and stick it back on the screen. Uh, if it looks 
good. It probably is good, if that makes sense. Uh, we've only been caught out a few times on other models which have not been that. It looks like it will fly okay. It's very similar to the other one. Uh, I'm sure uh, it will be all right. But as remember, we always hold our final judgment until we get the model here built and out flying. Uh, so yeah, we'll see on that one. Uh, oh, we got some new FPV goggles on the way, the Ishin EV800Ds. Uh, the reason why I bought those ones is because those are the ones which I'd seen Mark using. Uh, the screen is quite big, it's 800 by 480 not a type of goggle which I would normally get used compared to, like, say, the Fat Shots. I've been very spoiled by them. But for my daughters to learn FPV with, absolute bargain, 100 quid, or $100. Uh, minus, I think I had a code for that one, uh, minus the discount code. So, uh, but yeah, very happy about that one, to say the least. And then we had the uh, V900, which is out very soon. That's from uh, Horizon Hobby. Uh, I think it's about 130 quid. Definitely getting myself ha hands on one of those. Anything which going 120 miles an hour plus is right up my street. Uh, and we then spoke about the backlog. If there's one, only one video which you watch in the backlog, uh, I would suggest go and take a look at the FPV diamond uh, for separation of components inside your FPV models. Uh, and even on smaller models, you'll see me holding up a Z84, the rules still apply for maximum separation. Right. Did I just see a note in there about... Oh, sorry, I've scrolled down on there. Uh, Joanne said, although a Drac would be on the bucket list model. Yeah, Andy's actually got a full-size Drac as well. Maybe I'll give him a poke and see if we can get it out again. Anyway, we'll see up. <laughs> see how that goes. Uh, Alistair, I just laminated a C1. Hope it holds up better this time. I hope it does too. Alistair, I don't know what happened the first time around, but uh, just remember, give it a really, really good hard lob uh, and watch out for the dip as well. When the wings like that dip after the launch. Uh, and that one caught me out with my C1 chaser originally, uh, and I ripped the motor mount out the back. That's why my C1 ended up with a piece of plywood glued in the back. Uh, and then I used the mini talon motor on the back. Uh, absolute corky model, very comfortable in the sky, very glidey. Nice model, nice model to say the least. Right, anyway, it's time for me to go for myself, Matt. Thank you very much for taking the time to join me here live for today's RC Coffee Chat. Pause for a moment, for a quick sip. If it's your first time here, welcome aboard. Like we said, my name is Matt. We run these RC Coffee Chats every single Wednesday at 6 a.m. BST, whatever time it is here in the UK or wherever it is with you in the, wherever you are in the world. Uh, if you've not subscribed yet, underneath this video there's a red button. Now, because YouTube is special, you don't have to subscribe just once. You have to do it twice. Uh, and what I mean by that, hit the red button to subscribe and then press the bell icon uh, to get notified when the next episode is out. Now, I've already kind of spoiled the thunder because I've already told you the episodes which are coming out in the near future. Uh, and if you want to see those, links to all those are down in the video description. If you want to find out what other episodes are coming out very shortly and the, the second that they've been released, uh, there's a link to the Facebooks group down below as well. Uh, go and click on that one. Hit the join button on the right-hand corner of the screen. One of the moderators will pick up your invite, uh, your uh, request later today. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the Facebooks group where there is and has been quite a bit of carnage in there in the last couple of days. Well done. <laughs> And I'll leave it on that note. So for myself, Matt, big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here uh, for just a chit chat and an update of what's been going on in the world of Matt uh, and RC models over the last couple of days or so. I am really looking forward to that wing, but remember when it comes to new foam, and, and, and again, I'm, I'm saying this because it's just turned up to pre-order today. It wasn't pre-order yesterday. I've got it on pre-order. We'll get it. We'll see what it's like see what the kit's like, and we're, oh, crucially, uh, we, we've had models here which have been quick to arrive, quick to build, and then have been absolute dogs, and then we've had other models here which have been slow to arrive, they've been an absolute nightmare to build, and then with the second we've thrown them, they've been absolutely peachy, and every minor little gripe on the build process uh, has just been lost, and they've been absolute corking models, so that's why we always hold our final reviews 
uh, on these models uh, until the very end or until uh, we actually get them here and we actually chuck them and get them in the sky. So with that said for myself, Matt, thank you very much, very much for joining me for a cuppa and I'll see you again same time next week. Cheerios!